Journey of the Jupiter by Lynn Oliver. There were three things Chappie loved best in the world, food, fetching sticks, and Nick O'Leary. Every afternoon, Chappie followed Nick to the stream that ran through the small town of Reno where they lived. Nick tossed sticks, and Chappie leapt high into the air to catch them. Chappie would wag his tail and sniff at Nick's pockets until he found the treat Nick had hidden for him. It was a good life for a boy and his dog. Then one day it all changed. We're moving to California, Mr. O'Leary said, as the family ate their Sunday morning breakfast of eggs and biscuits. I'm taking a job as the telegraph operator at the train station in Sacramento. Nick dropped his fork in surprise. He had lived his whole life in Reno, and suddenly he was moving to the big city. I think we'll like Sacramento, Mr. O'Leary said. Mento, squealed Nick's sister Jenna, tossing a biscuit for over the side of her high chair. Chappie, always on the lookout for food, caught the biscuit and gulped it down. <clears throat> Chappie, you're going to have to stop that, Nick said. You don't want the dogs in Sacramento to think you have bad table manners. I'm afraid we can't take Chappie with us, said Mr. O'Leary. We don't even know where we're going to live yet, explained Nick's mother. Perhaps once we get settled, we can send for Chappie. Nick looked at his dog, who was happily sniffing for crumbs on the floor. He and Chappie had never been apart. Nick's eyes welled up with tears. The day the O'Learys were to leave, they brought Chappie to the train station. Nick had packed Chappie's brush and bowl and favorite stick to give to Fergie Ferguson. Fergie was the station master of the tra Reno train depot. He had agreed to look after Chappie. Don't you worry about chaps, Fergie told Nick. I've raised six children, a goat, and three ornate cats. I can surely take care of this tail wagger here. Nick scratched Chappie on the belly. This is where he likes to be scratched, he explained to Fergie. He likes to play catch, and he hates to get a bath, and he'll eat anything that doesn't eat him first, except lima beans. Nick's instructions were drowned out by the blast of a steam whistle. The train was coming into the station, and what a train it was! The Jupiter was the finest locomotive on the Central Pacific Railroad. It was a beauty, too, with red wheels and shining trim that sparkled like a brass marching band. All aboard, shouted the conductor. Goodbye, Chappie, Nick whispered. He gave Chappie one last hug and turned aboard the train. Chappie followed him. Nick looked into Chappie's golden eyes. You have to stay here, fella, he said. Chappie whimpered softly. Nick got Chappie's stick and threw it across the yard. Chappie ran after it. As Nick hurried aboard the Jupiter, the last thing he saw was Chappie leaping high into the air to catch the stick, just like always. Nick took a seat by the window and watched as Reno faded into the distance. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a rock that he had taken from the stream the day before. It shimmered with the purple-blue color of silver ore. Fighting back tears, Nick held the smooth rock tightly in his hand. It was hard to leave home, and hardest of all, to leave Chappie. The Jupiter picked up speed. Nick stared with wonder as they approached the towering Sierra Nevada mountains. His heart raced as they wound through tunnels and blasted from thick granite walls. He held his breath as they inched across narrow trestles that looked down into rocky canyons. When the Jupiter reached the Donner Pass and began to climb toward the summit, the weather grew cold. Snow covered the ground. Nick pressed his face against the frosty window. Looking out, he remembered how Chappie loved to fetch snowballs, even though they always broke apart in his mouth. Nick smiled. He wondered what Chappie was doing now. When the Jupiter pulled into Sacramento Station, Nick felt as if he had landed in another world. The city was crowded with new faces, sights, and smells. Big, Jenna said, pointing to the huge train station bustling with people. Big, she squealed, as they walked by a grand hotel on Front Street. Big, she giggled, pointing to the long beard of an old prospector. They passed a house where a Chinese family was cooking delicious-smelling vegetables. Nick thought of Chappie. His nose would be very busy here. The O'Learys moved into a small house with another railroad family. Mr. O'Leary worked long hours at the train station, operating the telegraph. Nick liked his new school, but he missed going to the river to play with Chappie. 
When school was out, he would walk to the station with a hot meal for his father. Wherever he went, he carried the purple-blue rock from Nevada in his pocket. It reminded him of home. Often, Mr. O'Leary let Nick stay late in the telegraph office to do his schoolwork. On one of these nights, Nick took out a sheet of paper and wrote a letter. It said, Dear Chappie, you are still my best friend, your pal Nick. Nick put the letter in an envelope, addressed it to Chappie O'Leary, Reno, Nevada, and dropped it in the mailbox at the station. The next day, the Jupiter arrived in Reno from Sacramento. As always, Benjamin Harris, the mail clerk from, on the Jupiter, delivered the mail to Fergie. Here's a letter with no address, he called. It's made out to a Chappie O'Leary in Reno. Do you know him? Know him well, Fergie answered. In fact, he happens to be asleep under my desk right now. Must be a strange fellow, said Benjamin. Fergie whistled for Chappie, who came running in from the office. Hey, chaps, you got yourself a letter, he said. Fergie opened the envelope and took out the letter from Nick. Chappie sniffed it. He stuck his nose inside the envelope and sniffed that, too. His tail wagged wildly. That's right. It's from Nick, said Fergie. You got a good nose on you, chaps. You're one smart dog. Chappie followed the scent into the mail car and directly to the pigeonhole where Nick's letter had been. He stuck his nose into the slot and sniffed. He barked and whimpered, then ran in circles around the mail car. He jumped on Benjamin and licked him all over his face. Hey, big fella, what's that for? Benjamin said, laughing. I didn't do anything. But Benjamin Harris had done more than what he would ever know. He had shown Chappie that Nick hadn't disappeared off the face of the earth. Nick was somewhere out there, and maybe, just maybe, the Jupiter could help Chappie find him. The next time the Jupiter came through Reno, Chappie was on the platform, waiting. He tried to jump on board and almost knocked the conductor down. No dogs are allowed on the train, the conductor said, taking Chappie back to Fergie. You know the rules. I don't know what's got into Chaps, said Fergie. Ever since the Jupiter came through last week, he's been pacing and whining and sniffing these tracks like they were made out of steak. Chappie watched the Jupiter pull out of the station. His eyes followed the train as it headed out of town. Suddenly, he bolted onto the track and took off after the train. Chappie, yelled Fergie, stop! Chappie didn't stop. He raced after the Jupiter, dashing across the yard, over the bridge and out into the desert. Chappie ran along the tracks as fast as his legs could go. For a while, he could see the train getting bigger. He was catching up. But soon the train got smaller, then disappeared from sight. The countryside stretched out on all sides, quiet except for the sound of the train in the distance. Chappie was breathing hard. He was very thirsty. The tracks led to a town even smaller than Reno. The station was empty. Chappie was hot and tired. His paws were sore. He wanted to lie down and rest, but he didn't. He began to run again, still following the path of the Jupiter. Some hours later, a girl named Wa Lin Chu waited at the train station in the town of Truckee, 20 miles from Reno. She and her mother had come from China to join her father, who had worked on the railroads. Now his job was over, and they were moving to Sacramento so her father could find new work. As she watched the Jupiter pull in, Wa Lin felt frightened. It had been hard to leave China, Everything was so different in America. Now she was going to the, on the train to a big American city. And everything would be different again. Her father told her to be brave, but it was difficult. Then, Walden saw him, a golden-eyed dog limping along the tracks toward the station. Her heart went out to him. She wondered where he was headed. Was he like her, going to a new place and feeling frightened? Walden whistled, and Chappie turned toward the friendly sound. His tail wagged. He came to her, and she gave him water from the pump. He drank happily from her hands, while then stroked his head until it was time to board the train. The Jupiter left Truckee and continued its slow climb into the Sierra Nevada mountains. As the train went higher, the wind blew colder. While Lynn wanted to get out of the crowded passenger car and breathe the cold, clean air, her father said she could stand on the black platform for a while. Wallin stepped outside and looked around. Ahead, she saw a high trestle suspended over a deep, jagged canyon.
It was an amazing sight. Then she looked behind her and saw something even more amazing. It was Chappie, his head bent into the howling wind, struggling along the tracks. While Anne looked at the narrow trestle ahead, then back at Chappie. All it would take was one false step and he would fall. It was a long way to the bottom. While Lynn whistled, Chappie's ears stood straight up. She whistled again. This time, Chappie saw her. He ran faster, trying to catch up to her. He was panting hard. The Jupiter starred across the trestle. While Lynn looked down into the deep gorge and shivered with fear. Chappie had to jump onto the train, and he had to jump now. While Lynn stretched out her arms and called to Chappie. At the sound of her voice, he gathered his last bit of strength and leapt, just like he used to when Nick threw sticks for him. While Lynn held her breath as Chappie sailed through the air, the next moment he was on the platform, safe in her arms. She could feel his heart pounding. While Lynn smiled, and Chappie licked her face all over. The conductor, who had been watching from inside, burst through the door. I know that dog, he said. He's from Reno. I can't believe we followed the train all the way here. That's incredible. The conductor was so impressed with Chappie's amazing journey that he made an exception to his no dogs rule. As a special reward, he let Chappie ride up in front next to the engineer. Chappie hung his nose out of the Jupiter's cabin and took in the sights and smells of California, while Lynn sat right beside him, smiling as the Jupiter sped down the mountain toward her new home. When the Jupiter pulled into the Sacramento station, Nick, his mother, and Jenna had arrived with Mr. O'Leary's supper. Jenna looked up as the train ground to a stop. Chappie, she squealed. Chappie is in Reno, said Nick. Remember? No, Nicky, said Jenna, pointing to the Jupiter. Chappie, choo-choo. Nick turned around. He couldn't believe his eyes. Chappie, he yelled. Chappie bounded over to Nick, almost knocking him down. Nick hugged his big brown dog, until his arms hurt. The conductor told Nick how Wallen had helped save Chappie. Nick smiled at her, then took out the purple-blue rock he had always carried in his pocket. It had been the only reminder he had of home. Now he had Chappie. I bought this for good luck, he said. I want you to have it now. Nick put the rock in Wallen's hand. She looked at it and grinned. Then she bowed at Nick, and he bowed too. As for Chappie, he didn't see any of this. He was busy eating Mr. O'Leary's supper of pot roast and mashed potatoes.